Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. With AMD's new Zen architecture coming out, its first architecture overhaul since 2012, a lot of people are looking to the future to see what AMD has to offer. Well, today we're going to look back on a decade to see how far AMD has come. Today we're going to be looking all the way back to 2006 when AMD had their Athlon 64X2 processors as the king of the hill for performance in the CPU market. And we're going to see how AMD has progressed in the past decade all the way up to their FX lineup. All of the CPUs we're going to be looking at today represent the most common high-end processors that AMD had to offer at the given time. Not necessarily the absolute best, but what most people were going for in order to achieve best price to performance. Our first processor we'll be looking at is the AMD Athlon 64X2 6000 Plus, clocked at 3.1 GHz, a very high clock speed for its time. Our second processor is an AMD Phenom 9850 Black Edition processor, clocked at 2.5 GHz, a moderate clock speed for its time, but with a first true quad-core processor. Our next up is the AMD Phenom 2 955 Black Edition processor, an unlocked multiplier processor that was able to clock up to typically 4 GHz and represented the pinnacle of what AMD had to offer when it was released. And last but not least, the ever so popular AMD FX8350 processor with 8 cores and an unlocked multiplier known to reach up to 5 GHz on liquid cooling. A couple things to note, first we are running all of these processors at their respective base clock speed, we didn't overclock anything in this test. We're also going to be leaving out the AMD Phenom 2 Thubin 6 core series since that is more of a top tier processor and not what most gaming enthusiasts would be buying. And last but not least, we are leaving out that little series between the Phenom 2 and the FX8300 series, the series we don't speak of because mainly everyone was very disappointed with this performance and I don't even want to mention the name. So there. We ran our processors through a number of benchmarks and here's the setup. We have the AMD Athlon 64X2 running at 3.1 GHz with 4 GB of DDR2 RAM running at 800 MHz clock. And we have an AMD R9 390 Sapphire graphics card with an absurdly powerful 1200 watt power supply and an SSD for our boot devices. And our Phenom 9850 Black Edition was also running on the same test bench. Our Phenom 2 and our FX processor were both running on a similar test bench with the same R9 390, the same SSD, and uh, the same 1200 watt power supply, but they were running with four gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. Now I know what you're thinking, four gigabytes of RAM is not enough. I actually ran all of these tests with the FX processor with eight gigabytes of RAM and the test results were absolutely identical. The reason I had to run with four gigabytes is because the motherboard I had for the Athlon 64X2 and the first series Phenom only supported two DIMM slots, so I was only able to run with four gigabytes. We ran Cinebench R15, which is basically the standard for CPU benchmarks in today's environment. We ran Unigine Heaven benchmark, which represents a much more graphically intensive benchmark, so we might be able to see these older processors be relatively well utilized. We ran Fire Strike, which is a very balanced benchmark, which represents good CPU utilization and GPU utilization. And we also ran our Star Swarm benchmark, which represents a more modern API, it runs on Mantle, but it is very similar to Vulkan that will be coming out in the future, so we could see how these older processors can utilize their cores more effectively. First up is Cinebench, and we'll be covering our single core performance. Our Athlon 64X2 actually does pretty well, all things considered, when you compare it to the next generation. But you also see our Phenom 2 start to pull away quite a bit, and our FX processor really pulls away when it comes to uh, single core performance. Although I would like to note, the Athlon 64X2 is at a notably higher clock speed than our Phenom processor, the 9850 Black Edition, going from 3.1 GHz to 2.5. And our FX processor is significantly higher clock speed than our Phenom 2 processor, going from 3.2 GHz to 4 GHz. So this kind of curve in upward performance that we see needs to be taken with a grain of salt when it comes to per clock performance. 
Next, we see our Cinebench multi-core performance. And here you can see that because the Athlon 64X2 is just a dual core, it lags way behind. What's interesting is our first gen Phenom processor not only doubles the performance of the Athlon 64X2, but it actually has perfect single core performance scaling up to all four cores, which is really uncommon in processors these days, and you have to give a little bit of a thumbs up to it for that. Our Phenom 2 processor doesn't have quite the scaling from one to four cores as our first gen Phenom, but it also does pull away quite a bit from the multi-core performance of our first gen Phenom as well. When you look at our AMD FX processor, it blows the others out of the water when it comes to multi-core performance. But you have to take into consideration, this processor has eight cores versus the four cores of the previous two and the two cores of our very first generation processor. When you look at the scaling from one core to all eight cores on the FX lineup, it's not as impressive as the other lineups come. So that's something to take into consideration as well. A lot of that probably has to do with the module design AMD has in the FX lineup two cores per module with only one floating points performance in each module. Next, we move on to our Unigine Heaven benchmark, which really represents a much more graphically intensive gaming scenario. And as you can see, across the entire lineup, there is very little deviation, as little as 11% deviation through all of the generations of processors, showing that there are some games out there, the latest Tomb Raider installation, I can't remember exactly what it is, but that is a very good example of a game that utilizes very little CPU and is very GPU bound. Next up is Fire Strike, which actually shows a very significant performance increase from our first generation Athlon processor up to our Phenom processor, which is actually kind of interesting because at the lower clock speed, you would expect it to stay relatively similar since most games and benchmarks don't utilize more than two cores. However, Fire Strike does have a very CPU intensive section. And as you can see in the actual scores, you see a very notable increase until you get past the Phenom 2 stage. Once you get to the Phenom 2 and up to the AMD FX processor, you can kind of see how it tapers off a little bit, showing that our processors are catching up to our graphics card in equal performance value when it comes to a gaming rig. Next up, we have our Star Swarm benchmark, which is based on a much later API, Mantle. And although Mantle isn't widely adopted, it is what Vulkan is gonna be based on. So it might give us an idea of what we can expect to see from older processor generations in newer APIs. As you can see, our Athlon 64X2 processor really struggles with this particular benchmark. But once you get above that four core threshold, it's really not noticing a whole lot of performance increase, showing us that even older architecture AMD processors with four cores can very well utilize at least Mantle, if not Vulkan in the future. So what do we take away from this? Well, since the AMD Athlon 64 X2 series, we do see a noticeable performance increase. However, over the last three major generations of processors, there hasn't been anything earth shattering, albeit there have been significant performance gains. Looking forward, what we hope to see from Zen is something that is akin to the architecture performance gains from AMD Athlon 64 X2 on up. And the reason is, at least from an AMD enthusiast standpoint, we really want to see AMD back on top. And even if you're an Intel enthusiast, you really want to see AMD competing so Intel can no longer gouge us for high performance parts. If you like this video and want to see us do something similar with Intel or maybe on the graphics card side with Nvidia or AMD, please let us know in the comments. And if we get enough comments, we will do our best to make that video happen. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and leave a comment if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future. Our website up to this point has gone more or less unutilized, so we have revamped it into a forum to where you guys can receive and give advice on computer rigs, and we can be more involved with you as a community on a day-to-day -day basis. It's techtested.io, and we'd love for you to come and join the discussion.